guys, uh, so welcome back to sort of part two of my sort of how to build a computer. Uh, sort of part one, I just sort of showed you all the components uh, that I bought and sort of gave you a few reasons on sort of why I sort of you know, bought this and that. Uh, this sort of part two, we're going to actually sort of get into into the actual uh, into it and sort of start putting things together. Um, so I think we'll sort of start with the uh, the motherboard. Um, as you can see, I bought the. Uh, where are we? Uh, this uh, T-Bot motherboard here, Z77X uh, D3H, which is a really good motherboard from uh, uh, Gigabyte. So, open, open up the box, uh, first thing you'll find all the you know, cords and stuff and manual, all that stuff. Uh, of course, you've got the, the main sort of um, motherboard, which is in a, an anti-static in in anti bag, so, you sort of don't, so it doesn't sort of get fried or anything. Um, so the first step we'll do is obviously to, to um, you know, take it out of the out of the bag. And sort of like that. Uh, gently uh, slide the case the motherboard out. Uh, and you sort of I don't know, you could try and perhaps sort of hold it sort of by the edges, I guess. Um, if you can. Okay, yeah, that's pretty much what the uh, motherboard uh, looks on. Okay, so once you've sort of taken the motherboard out of the actual uh, anti-static bag, um, I'll probably suggest um, just sort of putting the actual uh, motherboard on the actual box that it sort of came in, just so you've got a bit of a, a work table uh, to sort of put things together. Uh, some people, I have heard some people just sort of put it on the actual uh, anti-static bag, which I have heard that's not a very good idea because I think you can still get, uh, you know, sort of build up of uh, static electricity uh, just on that. Uh, the other thing I might mention, uh, probably some people uh, wear what we call a, 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 an anti-static strap, uh, which just sort of you know, attaches to your hand, uh, and then the other end sort of attaches to your case. It sort of just sort of helps you sort of ground you out, so you don't sort of you know sort of don't sort of zap your, your motherboard while you're sort of uh, touching it. Um, I'll probably won't, I won't. I don't think I'm going to bother wearing one. Uh, I've never sort of reworn one, and uh, lot, some people, you know, don't reckon it's sort of, you know, there's no no real point to it really. They don't really sort of bother. I am sort of making a tutorial, so I suppose I should probably suggest on people uh, sort of wearing one, just you know, uh, you know, just in, just in case. Uh, the other thing you can do, um, if you just sort of just to sort of hold your hand, say on the on the actual metal case, every few minutes, if you just sort of do that, that should you know basically just sort of ground you out, sort of thing. So if you just do that every few minutes, that that should be fine. Should do the same. Uh, sort of thing is a um, you know, just what, one of the uh, anesthetic straps. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do, uh, once we've got the motherboard out, uh, is we're going to perhaps install the uh, CPU uh, into the uh, into the socket here. Uh, so I'll sort of show you uh, how to sort of do that. A quick rundown, just sort of all the components. So you've got the, you know that's where the CPU goes. That's where your uh, your RAM goes in those slots. Uh, that's where your hard drives go. This is the SATA uh, ports. You sort of put the SATA uh, cables in there, and then you put, you just put your video card goes into the, into that slot there. I think it is. Yeah, that one there. Um, and that's well, that's sort of the main. Oh, then you also got the. Uh, uh, let's have a look. Sort of that's that's the you know where you plug your you know, plug your mouse and uh, USB things in and you know, your sound uh, cables and stuff, and your, your network card sort of thing all in there. Okay, so we've sort of unboxed the uh, CPU box. So it sort of comes with sort of two main, or sort of three main things, I guess. Basically, you've got the, the CPU, which just sort of uh, slots in there. Um, and then you also got the uh, the fan, and then the heatsink, which is the grey thing. Um, that just sort of sits on top, just sort of to help, to help sort of uh, get rid of the heat that the, the CPU makes. Uh, yeah, so we'll get onto that. Okay, so the next step is to sort of pull out this, this lever. Just lift that up. That should bring that up. Yeah, it's just it's just a matter of removing this sort of uh, sort of fake sort of um, protective uh, bit of plastic. Uh, just need to just clip that out. And, you, and then the next step is to sort of just put in the uh, the CPU. Now it's probably just best just actually sort of keep uh, sort of hold onto this. I have heard that you you need to actually have this sort of put this back in before you sort of send back the motherboard. Uh, otherwise, they, they might not actually accept the, the refund. Apparently, so better better to sort of just put that put that back in the box or something, and just sort of keep uh, on onto that. Okay, so next step we'll do yeah. So we'll so next step we'll just install the CPU. 
Okay, so you notice that there's a little, um, where are we? There's a little sort of triangle there and in the corner. And there's also, I don't think you can quite see it, but there's sort of two little holes uh, sort of in the, in the little chip there as well. Yeah, I think you can sort of just sort of see that little, little holes there just on the edge. Now they sort of need to match up um, with, I think there's two holes. So <laughs> probably not showing it very well, but uh, yeah, there's little, you know, little bumps there. There's one there, and then there's one just there. So that means you just sort of put the uh, CPU in just like that. Okay, then. so once you've got the CPU, it's just a matter of just sort of placing it, maybe just almost sort of dropping it into the little, uh, little hole, it just seems to sort of place it in. Then we grab uh, that. This might be a little bit tricky, but if you just sort of need to pull that back, put that down, and then just do that, and it should uh, lock the actual CPU in, in place. Just like so. Okay, so the next step uh, is to sort of install the heatsink and, and fan. Uh, it's a very sort of simple sort of process. Uh, you notice on the back there we've got sort of three sort of grey strips, which is basically the thermal paste, uh, which sort of helps to conduct the heat uh, sort of away from the CPU onto the heatsink and then onto the fan to sort of blow the, the heat away. Uh, if you're sort of buying, say, an aftermarket uh, sort of heatsink, uh, then you might actually apply that sort of paste yourself. Uh, just, just sort of get a bit of a tube of thermal paste and sort of, sort of paste it on. Uh, there's plenty of tutorials on sort of how to do that. There's a lot of different sort of methods and a lot of people argue about <laughs> different ways to do that. But uh, if you sort of watch a couple, you should get the basic sort of idea of that. But for the purposes of this tutorial, it's sort of, we've already got the thermal paste uh, sort of already applied in the factory. So we just need to sort of uh, place place that on and then sort of flip the four four corners down uh, into place. Uh, I might just... I'll just yeah, I'll just demo this. So, yes, there should be one there, one there, one there, one there. So you put it, put it, obviously put it down straight, and then you sort of clip that one in, and you criss cross over to the other one, put that one down, and then you got that one, and then you got that one. And then that should uh, sort of hold it in place. Other thing you might need to mention, um, because it's actually got on the box, uh, I want you to sort of lift up the motherboard sort of while you're doing it, just so they can sort of clips and sort of go th all the way through the holes and sort of go through the other the other side there. So we'll we'll do that. Okay, once you sort of uh, sort of heard the four clicks when you sort of press into the spot, then you just need to grab your Phillips head and just sort of turn that, just to sort of lock uh, each of the sort of corners in place. Uh, pretty sure I've done those ones already. Next step is to just to grab the, the fan cable and just plug it into your uh, CPU fan. Uh, what? And just, yeah, and just sort of, sort of plug that into, into there. And that, that sort of gives the um, the fan power. So when you sort of turn the machine on, the fan should spin around and start to just sort of get rid of the heat. Okay, so the next step is perhaps to uh, install the RAM. Um, so you, I mean, you either probably install the RAM now, or I might perhaps just maybe perhaps waiting, holding off, perhaps and installing the RAM a bit later on. Because uh, once you sort of put the RAM. Uh, and sometimes it can be a little bit harder perhaps to get some of the other, other components in. But for the sake of uh, tutorial. Uh, I'll, I'll just uh, put this in. Uh, now the first thing you've got to perhaps just check is, is your motherboard. Because um, you've actually got different different sort of channels um, on your board. So you've got to make sure you sort of, if you want to perhaps use the, 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 the dual channels, which, which, I'm, which I'm about to do. Uh, well, I've, got, I've got two sticks. I've got to make sure I put them in the right channels. So in my case, I've got uh, channel one, which is the first one. Then you sort of skip one, and then you go to the next one. And then you sort of put one there, and then one in the, you press in the third slot. Uh, I think you've got to just check, as you can sort of see on the bottom there, on, on the gold, uh, it's sort of got a bit of a divider there between the two. So you need to sort of match, match, make sure that that's going to match up uh, with the divider that's on the actual board. So our room is fairly simple uh, to install. You just need to just sort of pull back um, two of these on, on, each, on each side. Uh, and then you basically just sort of put the RAM uh, just straight uh, into the hole there. So I just need to just basically sort of feed it through. There's a little, sort of little groove there which you sort of just uh, place it in. So we do that. And then it's just a matter of just sort of pressing it down hard to hear a bit of a click. There we go. So that's one. And then you just do the same. Uh, in my case, this is the third one here. So you sort of skip one and then go to the third one. 
So we'll do that. Okay, so the next thing is to install the motherboard uh, into your into your case. Now you notice there's, there's some screws, some sort of gold screws here. Um, the buses, they sort of correspond uh, with sort of the, the install holes on your motherboard. Now, sort of depending on the size of your motherboard, um, you might need to perhaps sort of move uh, sort of these screws around to sort of so they sort of fit up um, on your motherboard, sort of, so, they, so they sort of match together. Uh, but I've got pretty much the standard sort of size case and a pretty much standard size motherboard, so there shouldn't be any sort of issues with that. Uh, you find in your box there'll be some more of these sort of screws which you can sort of unscrew them and sort of move them around to the different sort of holes wherever they need to sort of go. So you just got to make sure you sort of uh, match those two together. Uh, but actually these, these are sort of used to sort of separate uh, sort of the metal case away from the, the, the motherboard. So it sort of helps with sort of grounding so you don't sort of, you know, sort of fry your, your, your motherboard by sort of having the two sort of touch, basically sort of touch each other. Uh, yeah, so we'll get on to that. The other thing you need to probably need to do um, there's, a, there's sort of a thing here which comes, uh, which will sort of come with your motherboard, uh, which sort of sits, uh, sort of clips over the top of that, basically. So you, remember, so you basically just sort of just sort of install that first, just in sort of the back of your, uh, the back of your case. Uh, I think that should just sort of clip straight in. And then, and then you just need to sort of put the motherboard, sort of slide it into the, into the holes, and then just sort of screw the little holes and sort of screw it down. And yeah, so we'll do that next. Okay, so I'm going to just sort of screw in all the all the screws that all the, that sort of need to be uh, sort of uh, screwed in. Uh, that that was a bit a bit of a pain. I already had to sort of uh, sort of push the motherboard really hard against the uh, the wall there, against the sort of the iOS sort of shield there to try and get some of the holes to sort of line up. That was a bit sort of a bit crooked there, but I just sort of you know sort of wiggle it in basically, you know, to sort of get it to, to go in. But we've done that. Uh, so next step, I'd probably do uh, a big pile of sort of cables here uh, that need to sort of be plugged. Plug into sort of some of the ports that are actually on the actual motherboard. Uh, these, these are sort of the cords that sort of go to your fans uh, up here and here, and also some of your, the fan at the front, uh, which is just here. Uh, you also got you know, your front USB and front sort of sound ports and stuff as well. They've got a little cable that sort of go from the port there, which sort of go all the way just into the motherboard there. So that'll be the uh, the next thing that, that we'll do. Probably the main ones you probably need to have uh, is the reset switch. The power switch, uh, the power LEDs, and the hard drive LED. The next step is perhaps just to check your manual. Uh, it should sort of tell you uh, where each of these sort of wires go and which sort of pins uh, you need to sort of plug them into. Uh, it's got to watch out for sort of there's like a positive and negative uh, for each one, and it's just a matter of just sort of putting them into the right right slot. Okay, the next next one I've got here to plug in is the uh, front USB, so I can sort of use the USB. Uh, puts on the front uh, that just needs to go just into one of these slots and then I've also got I'll be confused <laughs> I've got two uh, audio ones which I'm not quite sure uh, I guess that one's just normal sound and this one must be HD sound so that just needs to go into this one over here where it says uh, front audio I reckon we might try the front uh, HD one, so just yeah, that just just, just just sort of goes in there. The other one I got is the uh, front um, USB three header, which just goes into this little port there. It just goes straight into there like that, and that's it for those ones. Okay, so the next step would be to install the uh, CD-ROM drive or the Blu-ray drive and the hard drives. Okay, so to install the, the CD-ROM drive, I uh, just need to sort of take out one of these um, things, just off the front of the, the case, and then essentially just sort of slide in the drive, uh, just in the hole there. Okay, and then once, once you've sort of uh, slotted in the CD-ROM drive, just need to uh, insert two screws in there, just to sort of hold it in place. So there'll be two there, and there'll be two on the other side as well. Okay, then we've got there we go. This is the, the data cable, which just just basically goes uh, into one of these uh, SATA ports along here. Uh, you probably have probably SATA two and SATA three, with slightly different speeds. We just sort of check your manual; it should sort of say which is which, and you should just insert 
into one of the, the slots there and then you also got the power cable as well once once I get the power supply plugged in uh, should be a spare cable you just need to just sort of plug it uh, pretty simple just plug it straight into one of them it should only a sort of one one type of connection that will sort of fit so just plug it in then you've got power power and then data um, for your CD-ROM drive okay so to install the, the hard drives in, into the case uh, in my case I just need to pull out one of these uh, slots and then pull off these two side things which are just sort of on the side there where those white things are uh, and then just sort of place hard drive in there should be a snug fit and then you just sort of put these back uh, just back in the, there just to pull it in place you just grab the whole drive and then just sort of slide it back in there it should, uh, it should sort of clip back in with one of these clips to install the solid state drive, it's a very sort of similar sort of process. Uh, just grab another one of these caddies uh, and just put the, the hard drive in. And you notice there'll be four, four screws there which you can just sort of screw in and then just turn it straight in the drive again. And then once you've installed the actual hard drive, you just need to run a data cable, just plug it into the, the back there. And then you can probably feed the, uh, the cable through just one of the, if you've got one of these holes here, uh, just feed it through there. Then you just need to just sort of turn the, the case around and then just sort of plug that cable just into one of the spare SATA ports. Okay, so next step would be just to install uh, the power supply. Uh, just sort of just goes, you can either go as either got a spot for the bottom or it might be a spot up the top. That's sort of the main two spaces where you'll find where the power supply goes. Uh, because I've got a modular um, power supply, I've already sort of plugged in the ones that I need to sort of plug. There's some more holes there for some more wires. Um, so once you've put that in, just need a fourth, should be four screws at the back just to uh, sort of screw that in. That just sort of slides in and stays there. Uh, then these cables obviously go uh, through your system and then they plug into your, you know, your, your hard drives and into your uh, CD-ROM drive. Uh, if you have perhaps some holes at the back uh, through these things here, you can actually sort of plug your big cables, sort of push them through there and then bring them back through again and then go into your in, in, into the hard drives or into your um, oh, hard drives and then into your CD-ROMs or you can, in my case, the, the uh, spoiler should be at the back so I'll just put them straight so they'll go straight through the case and then come around then I'll, put them, then I'll sort of plug in the cords at the back there Okay, so to install sort of the main power plug uh, should pretty much look uh, like that. Uh, we can think that sometimes that might attach onto there, but in most cases you probably won't need that little small one. Just it's on the same sort of plug there anyway. So, so you just grab that one, and that just goes straight. There should be a plug here, probably next near, near your RAM slots it'll be. Uh, just need to plug it just uh, straight in there, and there also probably might be another one as well, which kind of looks like. Uh, like that's got sort of four pins. Uh, that probably goes, should be a spot uh, just here. Ah, just there. That one there, and that just goes, plugs into, into there. Uh, that only sort of go one way. You can sort of see there's a bit of a, a clip there, so you should be able to find where that goes. And that just goes into there. The next step, or probably even press the last step uh, before you sort of, probably the last component that I put in is always the, the video card. Uh, now you might find. Uh, sort, of, sort of two speeds this is, uh, with, the, uh, with these sort of slots. So you've got probably a 16x or an 8x. 8x is probably the older sort of style, and 16s probably the better, the sort of more, obviously the more faster uh, slot. If you just got the one video card, probably better just put it just into the 16x slot. Okay, now in order to do that, you need to sort of move uh, a couple of these back plates. Uh, so there should be a few screws. You just need to sort of unscrew the screw, and then you should just be able to sort of pull, pull these out. Put them away and then you should be able to slide the card in and then sort of screw the card in, in place. Now if you want to sort of perhaps release uh, the, the uh, sort of take out the video card, normally a little, a little sort of lever there, you just need to sort of press the lever in and then sort of pull the card out at the same time. Okay, so you might perhaps find a little bit easier perhaps just to sort of, uh, sort of lay the case down flat and then just sort of insert the, the card gently uh, into the machine. Uh, just be careful. Some of these cards, these cards are actually quite big and quite heavy, so you've got to just make sure you 
you know, don't sort of snap off the, the chip there when you, when you sort of you make sure you sort of put it down straight. Once it's sort of put in, then you just need to sort of screw the two screws in just to make sure it's in there tight. And then you also need to also plug in, uh, should we, sometimes you might have one, sometimes you might have two of these sort of plugs. Uh, should you should have one of these on your power supply there, just need to get the plug and just plug them both in there, either, either one or two, depending on how big you, how good your video card is, sometimes they'll need a bit more, bit more power. So, so that's, that's probably the last step. Okay, so pretty much you're pretty much right to sort of, uh, sort of turn the computer on now, just a bit of a test. Uh, this is a bit of a recap, I'll just sort of go through the things that sort of need to be uh, plugged in. Uh, first of all, we need to have the um, the pins here. So when you sort of press the power button, uh, that makes that sort of sends a signal to the motherboard to sort of turn the machine on. Uh, I've also got you know the uh, front USB. So when you sort of plug something into the front USB port, it sort of sends a message to the motherboard. Once I've also got this, the uh, the audio one there. It might be slightly different on your motherboard. Um, so the main ones, and also you've also got fans as well. So there should be a, a fan. Um, power there which sort of go should be normally there's like a socket uh, just up here that sort of when you sort of turn the computer on there's all the fan just pretty much runs all the time if you don't sort of have that spinning you might wreck your CPU so you've got, also got to, make, got to make, really make sure that that one's uh, plugged in uh, also when you sort of turn the machine on for the very first time make sure that is actually spinning as well uh, it also gets uh, another fan uh, for the back here back fan should be cable for that as well uh, that should just plug Pretty much I think it's just up here, up here somewhere, I should say system fan or something, just need to plug that in. So only sort of one way I can go, just got to look at the markings. Um, and then you also have some other fans as well, one that's for the front um, as well. And that's pretty much it for them. Uh, so you should have, for power, in terms of power, you should have the one pretty big thick one there, should just go pretty much uh, there, pretty much next to the, the RAM. And you should have another one, smaller four pin. Uh, out there, should pops just sort of uh, go in there. Um, then you should also have you know, the power power cables into your CD-ROM and into your hard drives as well. Um, they also got the, the data cable, which sort of runs from back of your CD-ROM or the back of the hard drive through there, and it should go just into one of the um, uh, SATA ports there, there and there. Uh, also, it's also a three pin. That's for the uh, front USB as well. That just sort of plugs somewhere uh, in there, and I think that's pretty much it for that. So let's just give it a bit of a test run.